Today, I'm going to show you how to modify the firmware on a Tungshen mid-drive motor. I didn't even know it's possible to change the firmware on these motors, and apparently you can do the same thing for the Bafang motors. Previously, I showed you how to build your own e-bike by installing a Tungshen mid-drive motor onto your existing bike. It works great and all, but one other thing I noticed was that the display was stuck on 100%. After a long day of riding the bike, the battery was still showing 100%. I changed to another display, but still, I really want this display to work because it has vibrant, beautiful colors and the screen is fairly thin. It works great in the sunlight. Modifying the firmware will get you the screen working as well as changing the bike's characteristics. I cannot go into the details about all that because we're in the middle of winter so I haven't ridden the bike in a while. The full instruction is available here, just in case you don't have time to watch this whole video and you can just follow this text by yourself. To modify the firmware on this motor, you'll need both software and hardware. Let's start with the easy one, getting two software for your Windows machine. First, there's the ST Visual Programmer. You can go here to download or directly from my Google Drive. So if you go to the website, Go down somewhere in the middle of the page and get the latest. It will require your email address, by the way. During installation, be sure to install directly on your C drive. Once done, it should look something like this. C code slash STM yada yada yada. Your firmware backups will be stored in this folder by default, which is yada yada slash ST underscore toolset slash STVP. And don't worry, I'll show you how to back up all your files as seen here. These are my backups, by the way. After installing, and when you first start the ST Visual Programmer, be sure to select this configuration. So it will be ST-Link. In the middle, choose USB. Down on the bottom, choose Swim. And on the right-hand side, choose this. STM8S10 5x6. Next, we need to download the firmware that includes the flashing tool needed. Go to this GitHub page. On the right-hand side, click on the latest and download the zip file. Right here, click on the zip file to start downloading. You can extract the zip file to your desktop or wherever you like. Again, I have this in my Google Drive for your convenience, but you should always go directly to the author's link or website for the latest version. On the hardware side, you'll need this module. There are a bunch of pins, and you only need three pins. That is, these two in the middle and one at the corner. I'll show you in a diagram later on. This module port is mini USB, and the cable is included by the way. Easily plugs into your Windows machine via USB-A. You can also try this right here. For some reason, there are a lot of bad clones out there. Apparently, I got the bad clone. That's why this does not work for me at all. This works though. To get it working with your bicycle, the Tungshen motor, you'll need an interface to go from this to this. This is basically just a speed sensor extension cable. I bought it and it comes out to be around 3 feet. Then I cut in the middle. This is the one that will be plugged directly into the speed sensor of the bike. Meanwhile, on the other end, you only need three wires. You need the brown, orange, and black. Black being the data, orange is ground. Brown connects to the 3.3 volts of the ST module. I crimp these three wires using DuPont connections. 
From this perspective, this is the female sign. Here, you can see all of the holes. On the other side, you can see this is the male with the pins sticking out. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but all the gold-plated pins are sticking out. You won't be using this end, you'll be using this end. Feel free to toss this away because you won't be needing that end. You'll be using this end. Here's a closer look at the diagram. On the top, you can see the homemade adapter using the USB dongle. On the bottom is the ST-Link module that I highly recommend using. We're only using black, orange, and brown. I use a multimeter connectivity test to verify the three pins that we need from the speed sensor cable. We got black to data, orange to ground, and brown to 3.3 volts. There is no 5 volts on the module, but 3.3 volts is good enough. Before programming the motor, be sure to remove the bicycle's battery or turn the battery to the off position. My fake USB dongle does not work, so I'm going to use the real deal, which is this uh, ST-Link module. There was a cover, but I removed it to see all the labels on the pins. You don't have to take the case apart if you don't want to, but this is what it looks like if you do. In the SD program, go ahead and go into the first tab, Program Memory. Hit Control R to read, and the data comes up instantly. If it does not come up, that means you got the fake USB dongle or module. If you want to, go ahead and save your configuration file. That way you can always revert to it, if you don't like your custom firmware for whatever reason. Let's go to Data Memory, Control R, save it, finally let's go to Option Byte, Control R again, and if Control R does not work, you can always go to Read, Current Tab. Now that we have all three tabs backed up, we don't need the ST software. Let's close it down. Let's jump to the Tungshen folder that you unzip. Find the Java configurator.jar. If your computer cannot open this file, you need to go here, download Java, and install it. When the configurator opens up, you can see there's three tabs of settings to play with. There's more settings in Assistance, as well as Advanced Settings. For now, I'm happy with these basic settings right here. So I'm going to hit on Compile and Flash. You can see all of my previous settings for the motor here. Each time you make a change and compile, it will appear here. It took a while to compile the code, but once it's ready, it waits for you to press any key to flash. Control C to cancel, just in case you want to back out at the last minute. We're going to hit spacebar to continue. On the SC module itself, you'll see it flashing red and green to let you know that everything's flashing. Once flash is successful, press any key to close this thing down. By the way, on this page, if your bike has lights, walk assist button, brake sensor, coaster brake, check all of those boxes as needed. Mine does not have lights nor walk assist. It does have brake sensor, but I cut it off already just to make the bike sleeker, less cables. But of course, if you uncheck brake sensor, then the throttle button will go away. So don't forget to enable brake sensor and check the box for throttle if you actually have a throttle button, like I do. All of these INI files are located in the experimental folder. So let's go back to your main folder 
and go into the experimental settings. Rename the INR files as needed. So you can see that I renamed mine already. Tongue working. And I'm going to include this INR file just in case you built the same exact bike with the same exact specs. That way you can load up my INI file and just flash it straight to your motor, assuming, of course, you have the same specs as I do. And here it is again, tongue working. I'm sure that you're going to be playing around with all these settings available in all of these three tabs. There's a lot of settings. So every time you make a change, go ahead and rename the INI files to something that makes sense to you. So you can always switch back and forth as needed. If you make some serious damage or change to your firmware, remember, you can always revert back. So let's go back to the ST Programmer. Go into the three tabs. Let's go to the first tab, Program Memory. Open the settings that you saved earlier. So here we go. This is the Program Memory tab. And then we'll go back to the Program Memory tab. And then go to the top button, which is Program Current tab. Once that's done, go ahead and go to the next tab. Open the files that you saved earlier. Go to Program, and then Program Current tab. Finally, do the same thing for Option Byte tab. Program Current tab. So now that the cable programming is out of the way, here you can see that I reconnect everything back together. I wonder if it's possible if you can plug it in here and start programming. But it doesn't really make sense because once you remove it, it's going to be very tight space. Well, at least for my setup anyway. There is no space for you to wiggle the cable out. That's why I still disconnect here and connect the cable here. Once I reprogram, you can see that the battery is no longer stuck at 100%. It is now back to the normal um, working at 81%, which is accurate. All right, hopefully you found this video helpful on how to install custom firmware on your Tongshan motor. I really appreciate you guys subscribing to my channel, liking this video, and thanks for watching.